What that means then is that Mr. Alexander was having some force applied to his head at the time that he was standing there. That's how you can know that Exhibit 193 occurred when he was standing there and the strikes to the head because the splatter that is on the mirror indicates movement hitting him and then he goes and flies into the mirror. But he's not dead. He's still standing there. This woman came to visit him. Came prepared though. So he begins to go in a different direction. And we know that he begins to go down the hallway. And he's still standing. The reason that we know that he's still standing is if you take a look at exhibit 133. That's a blood transfer. It's either an item with blood came by or the blood was already there. Well, the item with blood in this case was Mr. Alexander. And as he's going by, you can see he was still sort of standing. And in this rainbow, somewhat ironic, there is no good luck for him at the end of that rainbow. But you can see that it starts high. And it arcs down to the area where there's a the larger amount of blood. He's stumbling now that way. But he's stumbling with somebody after him. He's trying to get away. He's trying to get away from her over there. And she may cry now. But the jury instructions have told you that sympathy is not to be considered in this particular case. No doubt that she did it. No doubt that he's trying to get away from her. And you can tell that by the arc that is there. And you can see that even clearer. And here, with regard to exhibit 132, that's the same view when he's showing the arc there. Just for contrast, to show you that that was part of what was going on, if you take a look at the other side, the other wall, you can see that these are more at the bottom, indicative of a substance with blood either rubbing it there, or the blood already being there and an item going through there, as opposed to this arc that we see here. She chases him down. That's what she did. He's still alive. How many stab wounds has she already given him at that point? The ones to the back? Do we really need to count the number of stab wounds to get? Is there a, a requisite number to get through the portal of death? No, not really. There's enough here to get him there. He's already got the one to the chest which is going to kill him. He's already got the ones to the back of the head. They're not failed. And he's got the ones to his back. But they are accelerating his departure from Earth. Because the more he bleeds, the quicker he dies. He don't die immediately. And so when he gets here to the end of his rainbow, he gets there to the end. And when he gets there, that's what she does. This. This is exhibit number 205. Let's just throw it from ear to ear. There can be no doubt that he got there on his own volition, by his own movements, as he tried to get away from her. We know that because of the blood stain. You know that because of Exhibit 130, which shows you. And remember, the rainbow is right above there. He goes down, he collapses there. She catches up to him and goes for the throat. And if you want to believe her that she doesn't remember anything, doesn't know anything that's going on, why then? 
Why then, if she really doesn't know what's going on and can't remember, why is she so directed at a place where she can certainly cause death? If she really didn't know what was going on, if it was just really passion, if it was just a heat of passion, then you wouldn't have a directed hit to somewhere that's going to kill. You would have dispersed all over the place. But when he goes down, there is a direct strike to his neck, which is an indication of somebody who is thinking, this person's not going to live. He may get away from me in the shower. He may get away from me all the way to the sink. And he may stumble his way down that hallway. But you know, I caught him. And now, rather than stabbing him anywhere else, right here. So it's a very well orchestrated kill. And it takes time. By time, when somebody takes time, people think. So she's now stabbed him in the thigh. Now he's tried to get away, went to the sink, and was almost something to consider. Another thing to consider while he's at the sink is that in front of the sink is a mirror. And as he's standing there, a mirror is reflective of what's going on behind him. He has eyes. His eyes are still open at that point. He can see. He can see the defendant. But she's not done with him yet. And again, the point here is, is that if this were a hit of passion, if this were a situation where somebody was just upset, it would be random all over the place. But this was a strike to kill right at the neck. And then, after she does that, one of the things that we know is that the shooting didn't take place there. The shooting took place near the sink, where he had previously been standing. 